Good afternoon and welcome to the latest of our Posturite webinars. I hope you're enjoying the, the sunshine before the icy blast. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, mental health related sickness and how to, to manage it, particularly in a work related um, fashion. Just a few bits of housekeeping. We will be recording the webinar as usual and it will be available on our website afterwards. So if you have any technical problems, don't worry, you will be able to sort of catch it or listen back with your colleagues afterwards. Also, if you have any questions as we go through, you'll find there's a question box in the bar on the right hand side. Please enter your question and I will try to get as many of those questions put to our presenters at the end of the session. So really, you don't hear me, you want to hear about our presenters. And we've got Dr. Joe Yarka um, speaking and Rebecca Peters. And um, just a little bit of background, um, Dr. Yarka um, works for Affinity Health at work um, and also Kingston Business School where she works as an associate professor. And um, Rebecca Peters is a, is a graduate for, in occupational psychology from Kingston University as well. And what they are really here to talk to us today is about um, ways in which mental health can be supported within your organisation. And Affinity very much looks at the latest research and helps to provide guidance um, as to how that can be uh, put to best practice um, within the environment. So really, I'm going to hand over to them now and hear what they've got to say. I mean, I'm certainly looking forward to it and I'm sure you are too. So over to you. Thank you. Um, we're absolutely thrilled to be presenting our work and sharing it with you today. Um, thank you for the introduction. It covers most of my first slide, which was really just to give you an idea of um, our perspective and where we come from. So uh, I've worked for the last 17 years with a team that bridge both academia and practice. So what we're really keen to do is take the best evidence that we can find in academic literature, but also um, work with policymakers, organisations, employees, um, and people within a, a multidisciplinary arena, so bridging occupational health, human resources, and so on, to make sure that when we're looking at an issue, and in this instance, return to work, we're trying to bring together ideas from, from across the board. Um, and you can find lots of our resources on um, Affinity Health at Work, but also our hub that we've released this year, which is a, um, a resource for practitioners that provides um, information that is quality controlled to give you insights into the latest academic and um, practitioner research. So moving on to um, mental health, we haven't got time really to go into uh, a huge introduction to mental health and I'm sure many of you here know um, a lot about mental ill health broadly but what we're referring to um, is Mental health refers to our emotional, psychological and, and social well-being. And so we all have mental health and unfortunately at different points in our lives, some of us will experience impaired mental health, so mental ill health. And these problems can occur at any point in our lives and for many different reasons. So they can be um, a biological issue, it can be um, that we've been experiencing stress at work or stress at home. And they're often signaled by uncharacteristic behaviour. So perhaps changes in our behaviour, we make change in our mood or our emotional state. And also often you can see signals in people's physical appearance um, and, and the way that they, they may present themselves at work. So if somebody has been coming to work um, and over time you've noticed that they're not necessarily looking after themselves so well. That may be a signal for a, a mental ill health. But um, there is lots of information that you can find on sites such as MIND um, that will give you in-depth information if you want to know more about that. And also on our toolkit, um, you can see some introductory information. But one thing that really struck um, us when we were looking at the research was that one in three fit notes issued is for um, mental disorder. And so that means that a lot of people going to work, going to the doctors, um, and then being signed off work are uh, being signed off for a mental condition. And looking at what is out there, it's very difficult to um, see how employees and employers, particularly those within small businesses and uh, medium businesses, navigate that 
management of absence and also the return to work. And so there are many things that we need to do within an organization to help support mental health. And part of that is about promoting a healthy workplace culture, encouraging people to talk openly about their mental health, whether they are feeling well or unwell. Um, and also as an organization to review what's going on in the workplace. Are there any triggers that could be causing stress for, for the team? We also need to make sure we're thinking about equipping line managers with the skills that they need to, to manage their teams effectively, to notice whether people are feeling unwell, but also to give them the skills and the confidence to manage situations if people are absent and want to return to work. And ultimately, we need to be able to have policies and practices in place to support those people when they do fall ill. And so when people fall ill from um, stress, anxiety or depression, what we find is that from the statistics, one in six workers can be affected by stress, anxiety and depression at any one time. So if you think about a, a large office or people you know and work with, that's a lot of people um, that perhaps have experienced it or um, are maybe not sharing the fact that, that they are experiencing it. It's also a ginormous cost to business. So um, there are a number of different uh, different ways that we can calculate it. But if um, if we look across the board, around 1,205 or 1,560 pounds per employee per year can be lost because of mental ill health. From the research, what we can see is the longer someone is off work, the less likely they are to return. Um, and that may be a signifier of, of the severity of the illness, but it may also be that as people are out of the workplace, um, it's much harder for them to, to re-engage with work. We can see that there's strong evidence for, for different types of treatment and therapeutic interventions, and we can see that there is strong evidence for phased or gradual return to work when people are feeling better and able to, to take part in, in work again. Um, we also know that there are specific behaviours that managers can show to their employees to help support a return um, once an employee has been off, off work. So all of this evidence and, and lots more gives us an indication that we, we know we can do things to support employees back to work, that early intervention is vital, um, but this doesn't always work. And when we look at the research, the return to work process certainly offers often fall short. So some work shows that 19% um, of those people who do return often relapse and um, there's evidence to suggest that, that that is often because people come back to work and on the first day they take up their normal workload and they're work working at full pace um, without work being adjusted and therefore there hasn't been a gradual reintroduction to work. We also see that up to 18% of those who returned subsequently left their workplace. From discussions with organisations and managers, we know that people don't necessarily know how to, or if they do know what to do, they can't necessarily afford to make adjustments to work to help people return when they're perhaps not feeling at their strongest. And it's believed that in the UK we, we could do more to support people back into work and specifically for small and medium businesses without the, the um, internal expertise and the resources of larger organisations, return to work is a, a challenging area to manage. And this picture really shows what, what goes on. So when we've been talking to both employees who have been off and managers, um, we can see that there's lots going on and we often don't know how to talk about it and um, so you have your manager thinking well I don't really know what's going on they're not been doing the job they've been making mistakes they've not been themselves but what really should I do and at home an individual feeling that they're not able to concentrate it's all too much but not really sure how to approach um, necessary how to make themselves feel better but also how to approach their employer so that they can maintain that relationship with a view to going back to work. And so what we've been doing over the last six months and um, well 
a lot of the work over the last um, 10 years has contributed to this. But the last six months, what we've been trying to do is develop a toolkit to address um, this issue. And so we've looked at the literature. We've also looked at um, practitioner literature and available guidance. And there's lots of different guidance from the Health and Safety Executive, ACAS, MIND, all really valuable that point to different parts of the return to work process or mental ill health and, and management of, of that. We've also um, had a fantastic advisory group who have um, shared with us some of the, the tools that they use throughout the return to work process. And we've talked to employees and employers about their experience of being managed well or finding the experience difficult returning to work. And we've put all of these different perspectives together to um, develop a toolkit with lots of free resources um, and, and a guide to really help you through that process. So I'm going to hand over now to Rebecca who will talk us through the toolkit. Hi everyone, um, so it's great that we can be here to talk about our toolkit today. Um, so Joe's given me a really good introduction to you all about the toolkit and exactly how we've developed it um, in terms of coming from the guidance and the literature um, speaking to SME employee employers and employees um, really to help guide um, this whole process to what it's become. There is a lot to go through so it's going to be quite brief. Um, it's actually going live today and um, so we can actually share um, the link with you and give you more information on the website so that you can have a look yourself as well. Um, but we will specifically be talking just about the employee and employer guides today, um, but there are a, a lot of other resources on there and downloads um, and also the ability to give feedback as well, which we'll go through at the end of the um, webinar. So this is the home page that you can see in front of you. Um, the employee and employer part um, at the bottom there is what you'd be accessing um, to each of those guidances. When you do so, you come on to um, this page here. This is an example of a screenshot from the employer guide. Um, and what we've really tried to do here is make sure that the toolkit is being mirrored on both sides um, so that both parties can see exactly what's happening at each stage and for each step and also to give a bit of um, ability to have kind of some perspective taking as well and to be able to think about what the other individuals having to go through at this stage too. Um, in terms of this page that you see in front of you we've had quite a lot of, of feedback that people find this really useful and quite a positive way of looking at it as well because you can see the journey right from the start of, of having to deal with the initial absence uh, when the employee does go on sickness absence right the way through to um, keeping healthy and productive at work which is at the stage when they return and then you're having to maintain good health and and make them able to stay in work and keep happy and healthy at work um, so this is uh, the sort of pro overall process that you see we're going to quickly run through all the steps that we have um, and what's involved in each um, so firstly, step one, this really um, is about dealing with the initial absence. So a lot of this stage for both the employee and employer guides really focus on um, the element and the importance of communication. Um, as Joe mentioned, we know that communication is vital and, and important to happen at a very early stage in this process for um, the, the ability to have a successful return to the work. And we also know that contact with the manager can really have an effect on whether they end up returning at all um, back to work. So this first stage really focuses on that and um, also has tools um, and a lot of templates and checklists available that give people examples of way that they can keep this line of communication open. So for example, in the employee guide, um, we have a, a template letter and email that they can send to their employer um, obviously edit and add in their own personal details because we found that actually even knowing how to broach the subject of talking about your mental health or telling your manager that you're going to be off due to mental health can be quite difficult in itself and that's just the very first hurdle. Um, we also include in this area um, some benefits of disclosing so when we talk to some of the employees that have been off sick due to mental health a lot of them really struggled to disclose um, their mental health, but also almost needed convincing as 
what as why they should do so um on the other side of it obviously they found that their employers weren't really reacting with much sympathy to what they were having to go through but they also weren't aware that that they were actually being off sick due to mental health and obviously this can have a profound effect on the whole relationship the whole way through um but also the manager isn't really able to give support if they don't really know what's going on so there's lots of tools and tips in there to be able to help um, the employee do that from the employer side um, this is the very start where we would suggest really early contact um, when speaking to uh, an employment lawyer that was on one of our steering groups at the start of this project um, they actually were quite surprised that we would suggest and that the literature also suggests that um, managers do get in contact with employees at such an early stage and that this wasn't something that they wouldn't advise necessarily um, obviously this goes completely against what we know can help facilitate a successful return so we've really emphasized the importance of this and how employee employers can go about making that first communication again through some template emails also a checklist as well to be able to have a, a smoother conversation about mental health with your colleague over the phone and um, so lots of, bit of bits about communication for the first step this is just a really quick screenshot of what that looks like um, so this is from the guidance on the toolkit website um, you can see at the side the examples there that I mentioned about the downloads and toolkits um, the templates sorry that are available you also have the ability to rate each page as well so this is just the one of the forms of feedback that we'll be collecting um, to help evaluate this whole process um, but also the accessibility to step and flick through the different stages as well so what we've tried to do is really make it as accessible as possible so that people can download bits if they need to they can view it straight away on the website they can print it all off and have a look at it another time so there's quite a few options of whether you want to look through everything in an interactive manner or come back to it later but it's um, really designed to be as accessible as, um, as possible to everybody so step two um, is about developing knowledge and skills so in terms of from an employee perspective this is about thinking about the impact that this absence is going to have on your team and how you're going to possibly redistribute the work if that's if that's available so there's information about how to do that on there and also from the employer's perspective thinking about manager behaviors that actually lead to a successful return um, and thinking about how that manager can develop their skills in this area to help foster a successful return to work um, we also refer to the HSC um, management standard guidelines as well so there's all that information on there and lots of useful links of um, other guidance too um, so it's all in one place I think at this stage as well it's really important to have the reflection of putting yourself in the employees shoes as well um, so really how to think about how you're going to manage someone who is going through what they're going through at, at that stage and obviously in this instance that is mental ill health um, so there's some perspective taking exercises as well on there to help the employee employer reflect or the manager reflect um, and also information as well about how to actually have a sensitive conversation um, regarding mental health with your colleagues as, as I know a lot of people and a lot of managers really struggle to know exactly what to say um, in fear of that they might say the wrong thing as well um, also to mention on this stage is remembering to look after yourself um, because obviously at this stage the manager is under a huge amount of pressure as well again another quick screenshot there I think I'm going to have to flick through a little bit quicker as well um, so step three this is talking about maintaining communication throughout the absence so this is talking about fit notes how to record absence obviously keeping that line of communication open between both um, colleagues and also thinking about having um, a chat about the absence policy and the sickness policy in place and the options of possibly having a phased or gradual return to work so many people don't know that this is a possibility that they can consider um, of potentially having the combination of statutory sick pay and salary as well um, but there's details of how to go about that and obviously help to actually have a more successful return by gradually introducing the employee back into um, their workload rather than as Joe said starting um, at the level that they left on which can often cause um, relapse as well 
So that's a screenshot there of step three for the employee guide. Moving on to step four. Now, this is about preparing for the return. Um, so from both sides, um, this is thinking about the priorities of the job um, and how you can prioritise certain aspects of the job and what's most important for when the employee returns um, to be able to, as I say, have that work plan, have that structure when they come back. So they're not coming into the amount of work that they actually ended up leaving on. Also thinking about what work adjustments might be available. Um, we also have a list of included examples of certain adjustments that we suggest that might be helpful, um, but also obviously what the employee can consider in, in that particular organisation. So it's just thinking about potentially um, which work adjustments can be applied and planning for the return to work conversation. So if I move on to the next step, step five, this is actually where we have built a conversational framework that people can use um, for the return to work conversation. And um, speaking to a lot of people, we know that this was something a lot of people were dreading and um, that coming to that first day back, not really knowing what to expect. Managers not really knowing how to um, deal with this um, conversation in a in a uh, empathetic but also professional manner. So we have actually built a conversational framework. It does look like this. Hopefully you can see that on the page. You'll notice there. Um, so the guide for this is exactly the same for both. So both employees and employers can prepare for this they know what's coming up it gives some structure as well to the conversation um, and enables that you're not going to miss anything out um, and it gives um, each side exactly kind of an understanding of what's going to happen before they've even met so step six and this is the very final the last step um, this is keeping healthy and productive at work so this is having ongoing regular check-ins um, reviewing the work plan that you set in the work um, in the conversation that you would have previously had in step five um, and reviewing that in line with how you've agreed to review it um, and knowing that at this stage it's not just thinking okay they're back now they can do the whole workload that they left with they're never going to be off sick again because that's just not the case um, a lot of time people can relapse so it's really important to have those check-ins have that review and that structure of the work plan of what's been agreed and continually thinking about work adjustments and adjusting that as the employee um, gets healthier and also thinking about um, possibly their triggers as well um, and watching out for those so that you're aware on both sides um, that there's any signs of them if they were to become ill again or have any signs of mental ill health so that was just a really really quick brief tour mainly from the employer side um, of what is involved in the steps as i said there's lots more information on there um, on the website lots of um, templates and advice and checklists and things so do have a look when we share the link um, we'll also be uh, for our next steps obviously launching the website today and the toolkit we'll also be looking um, at different points of dissemination so our dissemination plan has already started and we are um, looking at various avenues to share the toolkit through and um, so if you do think that you're able to help with the dissemination, please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and obviously we can give you further details um, and information on the toolkit for you to share. We'll also be looking at um, gathering more feedback. So there is feedback on the website um, in terms of the usability um, and accessibility um, um, of the toolkit on there. But we also want to be conducting um, some further trials for employees and employers in terms of actually using the toolkit. Um, so if you think you know of or are an employer um, or an SME business owner or a manager or um, indeed an employee who um, is going off sick or mental health and would like to return to work, then we'd be looking at doing some trials with you and we'd be really interested in um, having a chat. So um, I'll share our contact details on here. This is actually from our website again, but we have, um, all the team's details on there that were involved in this project um, and our final details here are on the screen so hopefully you can all see that please do drop us an email um, if you want any more information or if you think you'd help be able to help with the dissemination or indeed um, the trialing as well Joe, do you have anything to add to that
No, thank you ever so much for listening. I think we probably have a little bit of time for questions. You do. Not not long, but we have some. Sorry to put you under under pressure and time. I mean, I have to say, I think that is um, so valuable. And um, I'd forgotten that you were launching today. So hot off the press, you hear it here first, which is always great. And I think, you know, certainly with discussions I've had, you know, having these templates are going to be so valuable for people. Anyway, enough of what I think. We have had um, a couple of questions and I'll get through as many as I can. Um, I think one probably quite pertinent saying, will these resources be free on an ongoing basis? Yes. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> nice and easy. <laughs> Everything that we do through Affinity Health at Work ends up as, as a free resource. Okay. Um, and we'll be putting a, the link to all this on our website with the recording of this. So, um, and if there's anything you can't find, obviously just get in contact, but I think there's a, there's a lot of contact details there. So, so that's great. I've had um, a couple of um, queries about the first slide about the winding road and about whether the arrows are in the right direction. Um, I think I'll just leave that one holding for you to look at. And if we need to talk about that individually, then, then we can. Um, we've got somebody asking about, um, they want to be more involved with the trail and dissemination. I presume the best thing is just to get in contact with you. Yes, yes. please do. That would be wonderful. So email Rebecca or I and um, we'll, we'll get in touch. Fine. We've got some great feedback saying this this toolkit looks looks marvellous. Obviously, I'll, I'll send this all to you, so that'd be fantastic. Um, very interested. One of our early questions was actually something we were talking about in advance um, about um, a lot of the things you were talking about would fall into issues around the menopause. Um, and the question was, you know, does the menopause fall under the mental health definition? There you go. That's an interesting one. Uh -huh. um, I don't believe it does, um, but there are, with mental health, it, well, I think this toolkit would be useful, uh, or the resources within it, for many different absences. Um, but also, I think what we often find is there's a, often a relation, a comorbidity of, of issues. So, for example, if you're going through cancer treatment, it may be that when you return to work, um, there are symptomologies of, of the cancer treatment, but also of mental health. Um, there are many, many other illnesses or many other physiological issues that are related to mental health. So not specifically in terms of menopause being um, included as, a, as a, a, a definition, but it can be related. OK, that, that, that's great. Gosh, we've got lots of people wanting to get involved. So obviously we will be passing on all the details to you. So so you'll be able to see that. So if you've if you've put in your question you wish to be part of the trial we'll make sure that's passed on but obviously please feel free to contact um joanna or or, or or rebecca you know directly so um now there was one somebody has asked whether the tool would be editable um yes yeah, so uh, a lot of the downloads um you can cut and paste you can some of them are in word so that you can edit them for your purposes and um, we're very aware that things work differently in, in different industries, different organisations. And so it's really about taking what you, you can to make it work for you. Yeah, well, that, that sounds amazing. Um, gosh, just I'm just read it, reading through all of them. Um, oh, could you tell us the URL now, please? I don't know whether you guys are able to give the URL now. Um, for the website yeah, we can. yeah it's it's um the only reason we were holding on is because we are literally launching today so we just wanted to make sure everything was working um because it is hugely interactive on the site there's so many different elements to it so um are we able to give the so um the actual website details is www.returntoworkmh.co.uk right, so www we... oh yeah Return to work, mental health. Oh, sorry, no. Return to work. Mh. Credit UK. <laughs> we will so make we sure that. because we've only just launched it. When you search, it doesn't come up automatically yet, but hopefully in time it will. <laughs> um, so you know how on on Google sometimes if you search for things, yeah. you may have to go down a few pages to find it. 
that's all. But that is the URL. If you type that into the bar, that should go straight to the website. Um, there we are will other... make sure that we that we put that with the link as well. So so we will get that put on on our website too, so you're able to find that. And I can reiterate, if anyone has any problems, if they contact any uh, yeah. myself directly or yourselves, we'll be able to do that. So um, please, you know, if you're struggling, please just contact either myself or or, or um, Joanna or Rebecca uh, directly. Gosh, well, it looks like we're sort of running out of time. Um, I would just like to say a huge thanks to, to the pair of you for that. And I think you are going to be inundated with um, with support for, for trialing it and, and for requests. So I hope that um, this is a positive thing for you. Um, and what I will be doing is I will make sure all the questions are, are sent over um, to our presenters. Um, and so we'll be able to get answers for everybody and any of the answers we will put up on our website afterwards. Um, so without really any more to say apart from, I hope that people can join us for our next webinar, which is actually fairly soon on Friday, the 9th of March, and it's on air quality. So um, I look forward to seeing a lot of the, or seeing that most of you will be joining us then. But until then, say, we'll put all this information on our website and I hope you have a marvellous weekend. Thank you very much. <laughs>